The strangest places in the world, part one. Firstly, on top of a hill in Pennsylvania, some stones can be found that shouldn't actually be there because there's no nearby high terrain where they could have originated. These are called the ringing rocks because whenever something hits these stones, they make a strange ringing noise. Next is the petrifying well in England where water flows from a rock and turns whatever it touches into stone. As you can see, people often leave items like hats, teddy bears, or even bicycles, which appear to have already been turned into stone. Some people believe there's a mystical power, but the scientific reason behind this is the unusually high mineral content in the water, which forms a hard mineral shell on any object it comes into contact with. And within a few months, everything essentially becomes a stone statue. Crazy things happening in the world right now that you probably didn't know about. First up, a brain chip was implanted into a paralyzed man, which allowed him to send out tweets with just his mind. This tweet was written by 62-year-old Philip O'Keefe by just thinking it. Next, NASA might know something that we don't, because apparently they hired religious scholars to prepare humanity for alien contact. And turns out we're not done with the virus because the first cases of flu Rona was found. But believe it or not, there's even more. There might be a whole new pandemic in 2022 called the bird flu. But let's end on a more positive note. Two inventors in Kenya created the first ever bio-robotic arm that's controlled by only brain signals. It was mainly invented to help disable people with everyday tasks. Follow for more. This five-year-old girl is the youngest mother in history. This is Lena Medina and she was born on September 23rd of 1933 in Peru. Her father worked as a silversmith and her mother stayed at home taking care of Lena and her eight siblings. At the age of five, Lena's parents noticed that her stomach started to grow strangely. They decided to seek medical help and they were convinced that their daughter was suffering from some kind of illness. Lena's parents suspected that her abdomen was changing due to a tumor growing in her abdomen. Lena had an examination done and the doctors told her parents that not to worry, she didn't have any kind of illness and the reason why her stomach was growing so strangely was because their five-year-old daughter was pregnant seven months pregnant to be exact. Lena's doctor was running tests to see how a five-year-old girl could be pregnant and he discovered that she was suffering from a very rare disease called premature puberty. Many girls begin puberty around 11 to 12 years old, but for Lena's case, she started her puberty around two and a half to three years old. She started to grow breasts at the age of four and her pelvis had expanded by the age of five. This rare condition can also happen in boys. They will have an enlarged private area, a deeper voice, and even a beard. The public and the doctors were completely shocked by this case, and fortunately, the birth went well. Meanwhile, an intensive investigation was going on to see who could be the father of this child. Lena never discussed who S ate her and under what circumstances. The shadow of suspicion fell on Lena's father. He was arrested and was later released. There was never a single piece of evidence that Lena's father did this to her and he always denied it. To this day, no one knows the father of Lena's child and she refuses to do interviews about it so we may never know the whole truth. So there's a specific place where hell is on earth. In the Bible, Jesus said one of my disciples named Antipas would die and be martyred, right? Uh -huh. Now, Saint Antipas was martyred and he was killed in, you know that, that torture bull? Mm -hmm. So they put somebody in like a metal bowl and like boil them yeah, alive. Boil it, okay. Yeah, that happened in Geneva, Switzerland. People are saying Geneva, Switzerland like the is the literal place of hell. It's literally the portal to hell or that's at least where the devil resides because that's what it says in the Bible. Now check this out. Okay. Do you know what else is in Geneva, Switzerland? What? CERN. Oh. CERN headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland and the CERN logo is what? Six, yeah, six, yeah. six, fam. CERN is working on particle generation yeah. and messing with matter of the universe to tear our dimension with the supernatural and the natural, fam. Yeah. So, so what if theory? They're trying to open the, the portal to hell, bro. Here's the truth behind the Grinch. So we all know the Grinch absolutely despises Christmas. However, at the end of the movie, his heart grows three sizes and he loves Christmas once again. But this story continues longer than you think. Now it's quite obvious the Grinch isn't exactly right in the head. But during a scene in the movie, the Grinch seriously injures his head. This injury took a toll on him as he grew older and eventually he lost his memory. After him and his dog died, they were given a new life in a realm called Halloween 
Halloween Town, where they now lived as Jack Zellington and Zira. He would later re-spark his love for Christmas, just like he did when he was alive. Both eventually wear a Santa suit, both deliver presents, and both have a dog companion. This means the Grinch and the Night Before Christmas are tied together. Surprising facts about religion. Christianity is the most popular religion worldwide. Hinduism is supposedly the oldest religion worldwide. China is the most atheist country in the world. Around 1.2 billion people do not follow any religion. Somalia is ranked as the most religious country. Just ring your doorbell because I have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? I just have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? I just have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? My anxiety would be through the roof if this ever happened to me. This man was trying to enter this woman's home after he saw her inside her kitchen through an open window. And then he walked up to the door, which you see in this video, and told her that he wanted to R her and take her life. Police found him the next day. He identified himself as the Holy Spirit, and then he was arrested. This is the disturbing truth about Disney World. In the haunted mansion at Disney theme parks, people who go on the ride commit suicide during the course of the ride and become a ghost. At the beginning of the ride, the ghost narrator says, the only way to escape the mansion is to die. And he then shows that he hanged himself. Near the end of the ride, there's a moment when the ride's vehicle turns around backwards and you go off a balcony, which represents you jumping to your death. Before that part of the ride, all of the ghosts are trying to scare you. But afterwards, they sing excitedly and invite you to party with them, technically meaning that you're dead. This is a super disturbing ride, and it's crazy to think that this ride is at Disney. So this is disturbing and will blow your mind. Did you know that it wasn't illegal to own CP or CSAM in Japan until the year 2014? That's right, until the year 2014, anybody could own CP or CSAM in Japan with no legal consequences. I find that really hard to believe, but it is true, look it up. And did you also know that Japan just raised the age of consent last year from 13 to 16? Now, these are definitely steps in the right direction, not the adequate steps, I would imagine. But something really disturbing is that there's no law in place in Japan to prevent people from drawing CP, CSAM, and selling it. A recent study that was done showed that 30 to 40% of manga comics in Japan contain sexual undertones with characters that are underage. And like I just said, this could be like a joke or it could be full on graphic drawn content. And there are no laws making that illegal in Japan. I mean, I find that incredibly hard to believe. Here in America, you would be put in prison for a long time for having something like that in your possession. But in Japan, it is still completely legal and it hasn't been outlawed. Now, I don't understand why they waited till 2014 to finally pass a law that would put pedophiles in prison. But as you can imagine, the sentences that these people are getting over there are literally nothing. Like I've read stories of people that were found with hundreds, thousands of images and videos on their computers and hard drives, and they were sentenced to probation, asked to pay like a $500 fee. But this is a major issue and I felt like people should know about that because when I read that, I was just disturbed. If you want to join me on my journey to expose pedophiles and pedophile rings, listen to my podcast, The Conspiracy Files on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or you can subscribe to my channel. And let me tell you, this video, you should watch this. It is very enlightening.
You're probably on your phone too much, so here are some stats. So the Philippines consistently ranks the highest in screen time with an average of 10 hours per day, with Brazil and Thailand coming in second and third right afterwards with about nine, and Japan is the lowest with about 4.5. Men generally spend 10% more time online than women, likely due to men's interest in gaming, which adds that additional percent, but women consistently spend more time on social media and online retailers. 90% of screen time is spent on a mobile phone for the younger generations, though for millennials and greater, TV becomes disproportionately more prevalent. Generationally, 13 to 18 18 year olds spend the most time on phones at 7.5 hours per day, with 18 to 24 year olds spending 6.5 hours, and under 13 year olds spending 5 hours. The silent generation predictably has the lowest at 2 hours and 30 minutes. Screen time has doubled in just the last 15 years and has gone up 75% since the pandemic. 50% of infants are even using their phones, and 50% of people reportedly wake up in the middle of the night to check their phones. And finally, most people pick up their phones an average of 200 times per day. So maybe put it down. Videos that cannot be explained. You hear that? all done oh. all right jake you going to bed now all right got this nice bottle of boiling water to keep my sleeping bag warm but i'm not quite ready to go to bed so uh i'm just gonna put it right there on that note i think i'm gonna get my bed set up always try to put something in between the stove and my sleeping bag in case I roll around in the night. I don't want that sleeping bag even touching that stove. It'll melt a hole or worse yet, catch on fire. I'll go sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. Creepy last words people said right before dying. Registered nurse Shirley Smith said that she had a very rich patient who was a true Satanist that was dying of cancer. The patient had upside down crosses and a Satan's Bible by her bedside. Shirley said that she will never forget what happened. It was the middle of the summer and yet it was so cold and dark in her room that you couldn't even stand it, even in the middle of the day. She said that it got so evil feeling in there that she had to call a priest to pray with her and her aides before they would even enter the room. Room. When the patient passed away, she had not spoken in over 24 hours. And then all of the sudden, she sat straight up and said, Satan, take me. And then she fell back on the bed. Shirley said that after she passed, the room got bright and extremely warm. Shockingly, when they moved the patient's body, they had to get rid of the mattress because where her body had been, it looked burnt. And the most horrible smell was emanating from the mattress cover. Needless to say, Shirley went to confession immediately because she did not want an evil spirit around her. A nurse said that one of their patients had a serious recurrence and had to be admitted. Over the course of several nights, he had become quite upset during rounds. He kept asking for his wallet, saying that he had to pay the ferryman. The medical student on rotation in the department took a quarter out of his pocket and put it in the patient's hand. The patient then dropped the coin into the cup on his bedstand and calmed down. Later that night, he passed away quietly. The nurse asked what happened. The medical student who remembered his Greek mythology said that the patient had to pay Karen, the ferryman, to be taken across the river Styx. A nurse said that he was doing rounds at a hospital. There was one two patient room and one of the patients was a very loud and confused woman who could be quite a handful. On this particular night, she had a roommate who had passed away shortly before the nurse entered the room. She was DNR so there was no code blue. When he entered the room, he noticed that the elderly lady, who was usually very loud and confused, was sitting quietly with her hands crossed neatly upon her lap. Something was different and there was this look of serenity on her face. She asked him in a voice that seemed much younger and clearer than before. Did you see them, young man? They're so beautiful. He said, no ma'am, there's no one else here. She said, they're right next to you, talking to Mrs. Banneker. The angels, 
They're so beautiful. He said that he instantly felt every hair of his body stand up and an electric tingle course up and down his spine. They're not here for me this time, she said sadly. This is the true story of the Tooth Fairy. In the 1950s, there was a woman named Tess Tickle, who was a dentist in Ohio. One day after work, she had discovered her husband having an affair with their neighbor. But before I continue, I advise you to check if your phone is being spied on. Save this video, click here, then here, and if you see this, delete it immediately. Now Tess was angry and heartbroken, but she didn't react. She just told him to pack his bags and leave. Around seven months later, her husband knocked on the door, begging and asking her to fix his toothache. You see, he didn't have good insurance, and he knew that she used to fix his cavities for free. That's when Tess looked at him and smiled. She said, sure, meet me in my office tomorrow night. The next night, she put him under anesthesia. When her ex-husband finally woke up, he realized all his teeth were gone, and Tess was no longer there to be found. The next couple of years, men and women who were unloyal to their partners started reporting waking up to a dark figure who puts them to sleep and steals all their teeth. When police started to investigate, it led them to a cave in the forest. Then they saw something disturbing. Type part two if you want to hear what happens next. The scariest sounds in space are 100% real. A while back, NASA posted some audio clips on their official website of real sounds captured from objects in space. Now that should be impossible, right? There's no sound in space, so NASA's clearly a phony agency that fakes everything. Okay, relax. As much as I love the tinfoil hat stuff, NASA actually has something called an electromagnetic acoustic transducer, a device that can convert electromagnetic waves and other vibrations emitted by objects and map them to audio waves that we can hear. Pretty much everything is just a wave. Light, sound, electricity, radio, ultrasonic, the only difference being the length of each wave. Some wavelengths we can detect with our eyes, like the visible light spectrum, and others with our ears, like sound, and still others that we humans can't even detect at all. This gadget takes those waves and maps them to the audio wavelength range that we can hear. As it happens, some electromagnetic waves in space even occur within our audio frequency range, and we can listen to those directly using this device. Well, from those readings, these have been rated among the scariest sounds in space that NASA has ever recorded. That just sounds like a howling breeze in the middle of winter to me. This one, this one makes sense to me. A pulsar is a rapidly rotating dead star. I could imagine one would sound like that. As weird as it is to say, that's exactly what I'd imagine the Milky Way galaxy to sound like. What? Nah, 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 bro. That's fake. That's fake. This one I'm calling cap on. There's no way. Nah, 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 nah. Th this one ain't real. That ain't real. A little scarier, but this one sounds more real to me. Okay. A little creepier. Sounds like there's something going on over there. The moon. Now that right there, that's a black hole. Yeah, that's definitely not a place I want to be. Well, looks like that's it. Let me know if you think these sounds are real or not. Things humans weren't meant to see. A man traveled to Egypt and placed a remote-controlled car inside one of the pyramids. The 
original poster claimed to have found something the government would want to keep a secret. He also wanted to be paid $5 million for the rest of the footage to be revealed but it never did. gets deeper it shows what appears to be a tall figure inside the chambers. Oh my god. Me and a bunch of my friends at Fantastic Fest got to see the premiere of Terrifier 3. And not only did I get to see the movie and meet the freaking cast and director of Terrifier 3, I was sincerely blown away. Look, it's no surprise I've been immensely hyped for this movie. And also went into the theater being a big fan of the Terrifier series and wanting to have a good time. But I was not expecting to sincerely really like this as a movie. Because bottom line, this is the best out of the entire Terrifier franchise. Because not only does it dial up the intense scenes with art and the gore to an 11, but it actually has plot and moments with our characters. Now, of course, there's the big question that a lot of people want to know. Is there a moment in the movie that beats the hacksaw scene from Terrifier 1? Is there a moment in Terrifier 3 that beats the room scene in Terrifier 2? And my answer's weird, but that kind of depends upon you. There are some moments in this movie, especially the first time, 10 minutes where the specific moment may not be as like heavily gory intense as the hacksaw or the bedroom but the weight of what art is doing to who he's doing it to is where it gets really intense like they basically took art from terrifier one and put him in the same tone of movie like terrifier 2 yeah mean scary art is back and he's more brutal than ever and i think for mainstream audiences that's going to be the biggest turnoff but as fans of the terrifier series i was laughing through the entire thing maybe i'm just messed up maybe i'm absolutely sick but just damien leone has just an amazing showcase of some messed up gore like the chainsaw scene in particular Talk about moments before disaster. So I'll say this, I absolutely think this is the better of the three films, especially when it comes to just the overall movie aspect of it. The runtime, the editing, the pacing, thousand times better. This movie is definitely not gonna be for everybody. But if you go in expecting and knowing the tone of the Terrifier films and what Damien Leone is trying to accomplish with them, I think you're really going to love it. Oh, and the Ice Nine Kills song and music video at the end of Terrifier 3 is arguably better than the movie. If someone is trying to make you decide in a hurry, they are probably giving you a bad deal. Walk away. If someone has a panic attack, start breathing regularly and loudly. The person that is panicking will subconsciously start breathing in rhythm with you. When a group of people laugh, they tend to look at the person they like the most. Nervousness and excitement have the same body reaction, so if you're nervous for a speech, trick yourself into thinking you're actually excited. If you think someone is watching you, fake a yawn, then watch them. Get someone to contribute to an idea and they will more likely accept it. If you whisper to someone, it's more likely they will whisper back even if there's no good reason to lower your voice. If you want to make someone feel uncomfortable, look at their forehead while you're talking to them. If you want somebody to open up to you, ask them a question. If the person only partially answers it, remain silent and keep eye contact. This will pressure the person into talking more. If you want to be more persuasive, reduce the use of the words I think and I believe. Touching someone on their shoulder or on their knee creates a stronger emotional bond with that person. Chew gum if you are still nervous. Our brains assume that if we are eating, then we are not in any immediate danger, lowering our fight or flight response. When you approach a group of people, notice if they turn their feet towards you or away from you. If their feet point away from you, you are probably not welcome. Subtly nodding when people are talking to you indicates that you are genuinely interested in what they are having to say and they're going to like you more. If you take a moment to look at someone's eye color when meeting them, you'll be giving them the perfect amount of eye contact. If there is a mirror behind where you are ordering, you are less likely to be rude because nobody wants to see themselves actually be rude. If you buy the first picture at the bar with your friends, you'd be surprised how far you could go by saying, I bought the first one. 
If someone is making jokes at your expense, act like you can't hear them and ask them to repeat it multiple times. By the time they say it a third or fourth time, nobody's laughing. When someone remembers you, they are most likely going to remember the first memory and the last memory of you. So make sure you always leave a good last impression too. After you have learned how to do something new and have done it yourself, the fastest way to retain that information is to teach somebody else. If you have a song stuck in your head and you can't get it out, try and listen to the whole song all the way through while singing it. Your brain is treating the song like an unfinished task in your subconscious. Plan something for every Wednesday that you can look forward to. You'll start to look forward to it on Monday, and by the time Wednesday comes around, you're already halfway through the week and almost to the weekend. If you ask someone to do a small favor for you, their subconscious mind is going to register that they like you because they're doing a favor for you. Showing the palms of your hands while talking to someone subconsciously communicates that you have nothing to hide and that you can be trusted. Whenever you're introducing a new idea to someone and you lead with the words, this might not be for you, but it intrigues their interest and makes it feel like it probably is for them. If you need to remember to do something tomorrow, put something in your room out of place. If you don't want to get out of bed, throw your pillow across the room. The next day, you will see this item out of place and it will jog your memory of what you need to accomplish. If you're procrastinating, just stop telling yourself how much work you have to do. This will overwhelm you. Instead, tell yourself you only have to work for five, 10 minutes and then you're likely going to continue working past those minutes. People who are lying will normally blink more than normal, hide the palms of their hands, glance up to the right, mess with their hair, or use abnormally long sentences. If you're trying to get over a breakup, do not use fictional scenarios. Imagining your person with someone new is only going to make you more angry and sad about something that's not even real. If you want to create a deeper connection with someone you're interested in, ask them these two questions. What do you think we have in common? And what do you like most about me? If you are suffering from racing thoughts, use the 333 rule. Name three things you see, three things you hear, and three parts of your body. This will help center your mind and bring you back to the present. When someone apologizes for something that you don't feel like was that big of a deal to apologize for, they're probably telling you subconsciously what actually bothers them if it was done to them. If they apologize for interrupting you, they probably really just don't like being interrupted themselves. Follow for more psychology hacks.